Hey everybody, it's Dr. Joe and sweet pretty Callie. And today I'm gonna to show you some stretches and exercises for greater trochanteric bursitis. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. So before we get started, if you haven't already, make sure and click on the subscribe button down there because it helps my channel grow and it allows me to continue to make videos for everyone. So with greater trochanic bursitis, a lot of times is because some irritation has happened over the area where the bursa is on the hip here. Sometimes it's called hip bursitis, but if it's not getting better with traditional exercises and stretches, it could be coming from something else like an alignment issue or even a low back issue. So if you're not getting much better with some of these stretches and exercises, really check in with your doctor or your physical therapist because it might be something further up or further below that's causing this issue. So the first one we're going to do is stretch out the IT band um, just lying down because usually that's the culprit if it's a simple bursitis. So you can use a stretch strap if you have one, but you can use a belt or a dog leash, um, but you want it to be something solid that doesn't give, so not those resistive bands. So you're just going to wrap it around your foot and you can lie on a bed or a couch. You don't have to do them on the floor if you can't get on the floor. But when you're stretching the IT band, I like to keep this one down. You're going to bring your leg up, trying to keep it as straight as you can. You don't have to bring it up super high, but once you start feeling a little bit of tension, maybe in your hamstring area, then you're just going to slowly start bringing it across your body. Now the important thing is don't let your hip or your pelvis come up because then you're not really getting a stretch. So I like to put my hand here to make sure it's not coming up because I'm getting more of a stretch through my IT band here when I keep my hip down than when I'm just rolling it over. So really try and keep that down. You might feel it at your knee, but if you have that bursitis, you really might feel it in that hip area. So you want it to be Tension may be a little uncomfortable, but you don't want it to be painful. You don't want to push through that pain because sometimes that will just irritate it a little bit more. So 30 second stretch, come down, relax, shake it out a little bit, and do that a total of three times for 30 seconds. So then the next one is to stretch out your glutes or your rotator hip muscles because a lot of times that's in the area as well and so those can get tight. So a simple figure four stretch is really nice to do. So the side that you want to stretch, if it's my left side here, I'm going to cross my leg over and it's called a figure four because if you look at your leg it looks like uh, the figure four and your, your ankle is just going to be right above your knee and then you're going to take your hands and grab underneath this leg, but still relax your head. Don't stress out your neck right here. And then pull in towards you until you feel a little tension right here. And I'm gonna take a pause and get my thumbnail picture. You can take it along with me too if you want to. And then after the 30 seconds, come back down, shake it out, relax, and again, do that three times to really get that stretch out. Once you've kind of stretched everything out, you can go into some exercises while you're lying down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of switch as I roll what leg is the, the injured side, just so I can always be looking at the camera. But the first one is just going to be a simple um, hip flexion or a straight leg raise. So this is the side that I'm working. I usually like to keep this side propped up. You don't have to, but this takes a little bit of pressure off of your low back. You want to keep your legs straight and locked out the whole time. So if you pull your toes up towards you, that helps kind of lock everything out. Now this is a slow and controlled movement. This is not, I'm just doing this to do this and I'm bonking the floor or the couch or whatever. I'm going nice and controlled. I'm just bringing it up to about the height of where my leg is, my other leg is propped up. And then I'm slowly coming back down. So this is how fast you want to do it. It's not for speed is for slow and control to really work those hip muscles to get them stronger. So you can just start off with five to 10, whatever's comfortable for you and just kind of go from there. So now I'm gonna roll over onto my side, but I want to work the leg that's on top. So this is gonna be hip abduction. The lower leg can be bent just so it's comfortable. Again, make sure you're supporting your head so you're not stressing out your neck. I know I keep coming up, but I just want to talk to you. Um, so it's the same kind of concept. You want to keep your leg straight. You want to pull up your toes. That'll help lock everything out. But this time, instead of coming straight up, you want to kind of come up and back a little bit. And that's going to help get that gluteus medius muscle, where if you have that bursitis right there, that's going to help if you strengthen that area. So turn your toe down a little bit and lead with your heel coming just behind you a little bit. But again, see this is a nice, slow, 
controlled motion. If you need to stop each time and then reset, you can. Or if you don't need to touch and you keep that muscle activated the whole time, um, that's the best way to do it if you can. So again, you know, anywhere between 5 to 15 to start off with a couple times a day. So then you're rolling over onto your tummy. So it's still my right side. And now I'm just going to do what we would call prone extensions or hip extension. Again, I'm propping up on my elbows, but make sure you're comfortable. If this is comfortable, that's fine. But if you have some back issues, lie all the way down and make sure everything's nice and supported. Again, pulling those toes up help lock out that leg. But this time when you're coming up, it's not going to be a big lift. So don't try and make it high and then roll your hips up. You're keeping your hips on the floor or the bed or the couch, and you're just coming up a little bit. My leg might bend some at my knee, but you really want to try and keep it as straight as you can. If it bends a little bit, that's okay. But just coming up, you, you can see it's, it's not coming up very high, but I'm keeping those muscles activated the whole time. And then same thing, you know, anywhere between 5 to 15, just kind of working your way up. But less is more, so I would start off with less and then until you see how your body reacts to it. So then the last one of the four-way hip is going to be adduction, adduction. So we're going back to the left side. So normally you just turn all the way around, but again, I want to be able to see you. So you can either prop your leg up in the back or you can prop it up in the front, whichever is more comfortable for you. Some people like it this way. I kind of like it this way. It just kind of gets out of the way. You're pulling those toes up. And again, this isn't going to be a big movement. You're just coming up a little bit right here. So you're not turning your body and turning your leg and lifting it up. Your toes are pointed in front of you the whole time and you're just slowly lifting up and then slowly coming back down. So again, nothing too crazy, slow and controlled, five to 15 times. So then the next one is going to be what I call, I don't know if people might call it a different thing, but a hook line rollout. Hook line is usually just when you're lying on your back with your knees propped up. That's what we call hook line. And then you're going to roll one leg out while you're keeping the other one in one spot. You can use a band for this once you get this down, but I'm just going to show you without a band because you're doing more than you think you're doing. So if this is the side I want to work, I'm keeping this one in the same spot and I'm rolling this one out. So it's not rolling them together. That's kind of a different workout. I'm keeping this one here and I'm rolling it as far as I comfortably can without rolling my hips with it and then coming back up. This one you do want to alternate sides because now I'm stabilizing this side and I'm moving this side. So it works them differently. You can alternate back and forth or you can do them all on one side. You can do your five or 10 on one side and then switch sides. So it's definitely up to you. And then the next one lying down is gonna be a clamshell. So with clamshells, you might have seen me talk about these before, it's really important to do the right technique. Again, support your head if you need to, but you want your hips to be perpendicular to the floor or the bed or the couch. Your feet are going to stay together and the top knee is going to be the one that comes up. But try not to roll. This should stay straight up and down the whole time. So when you're coming up, you're not rolling back because then you're not working those muscles, that glute medius muscle. You're just bringing it up as far as you comfortably can, which not, might not be very high, and then coming back down. So if you're trying to do this, if my hips are rolling back, that's not really getting the movement that I'm looking for. So up and then back down, nice and controlled. Now with clamshells, they're kind of sneaky. The first couple ones usually feel pretty easy, but if you get up to 8 to 10, it's usually a little tougher than you think it is. If this becomes easy, you get to 30 and, you know, there's no problem, you can't add a resistive band. So the last stretch in standing is going to be an IT band stretch. And this one's kind of for the whole body and it really gets IT band. I call it the ballerina stretch. I don't know if it has a technical term besides IT band stretch with your arm up and over. But it looks kind of like a ballerina move, so that's what I call it. So if I'm going to stretch my left side, what I want to do is put that foot behind the other foot. So it's crossed behind. Then I'm going to take the same hand, that left hand, and come up. And as I reach over, I'm going to take this hand and kind of almost like I'm taking a ball and rotating it like a, a big ball. And as I come over, I'm going to push my hip out that way and I should feel it in my IT band. So 
really just getting that stretch like this. I'm feeling it all the way up and down here. My foot is down. Sometimes people like to actually have it curled a little bit. They get a little more stretch in that IT band. And then sometimes people even have it a little further back or a little bit closer up. So you can play around with it because it's a little different for everybody. Further back might get a little bit higher up in the IT band little closer over just a straight over we'll get a little bit lower down towards the knee so you can try it a couple different ways since it is a little bit of a balance issue too ideally you would want to do a 30 second stretch but if you can't that's okay and then doing that stretch three times so there you have it those were some stretches and exercises for greater trochanteric bursitis if you'd like to help support my channel make sure and click on the link up there and don't forget to subscribe where's sleepy cali yes down there and remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.